Today is March 2nd, 2018. My name is Blair Williams, and I'm here today with Judge Sylvia Rambo. So, uh, good afternoon, Judge. Good afternoon, Blair. Um, first, just to establish some context, do, how did your um, family come to live in Cumberland County? My stepfather was in the Army. Hmm. And uh, after World War II, he got stationed at Carlisle Barracks. And he retired from the service, and we just remained in Carlisle. Uh, that was about 46, 47. Hmm. Where, where did you uh, live when you first came to Carlisle? Well, uh, I can't pick it Virginia, because <laughs> that's where he was stationed during the war. Okay. And uh, then from Camp Pickett to Carl Barracks. And before Camp Pickett, I lived in Reading, Pennsylvania with mm. my grandparents. My um, mother and father were divorced when I was two, and I went to live with my grandparents until she remarried. Um, after uh, after uh, your stepfather retired, mm -hmm. um, did you have to move off the base? Yes, the I did. Absolutely. Where, where did you move to? Franklin Street in Carlisle. Okay. Where, which quadrant is that? Is that in? You no, know, we're G Street, E F G, up okay. in that area of Carlisle. So is that Street. north, northeast, northwest? I don't know. I'm terrible. Uh, I think northwest. Be, yeah. So how? Um, did you uh, start attending Second Presbyterian soon after you moved to Carlisle? Or? No, I didn't. Uh, I, uh, it, when you're living in a military family, mm -hmm. the, the congregation is whatever the preacher is. Mm. So uh, I went to churches on the, on the Army Post, and uh, then when we moved to uh, uh, Carlisle, um, I also attended Dickinson College during that period of time. And for some period of time, I spent some time uh, at the uh, in Washington D.C. Mm. And I ended up going to a New York Avenue Presbyterian Church, and that did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I then, uh, while I was in law school, uh, Reverend McCracken was the preacher at Second Church, and. Uh, he had two girls, and I ended up babysitting mm. periodically for them. And ever since then, it's been Second Church. That was, uh, and I joined the church um, October one, I think sixty one. So, what was it about uh, New York Avenue Presbyterian that sort of drew you it, to the church? It was just dynamic. Uh, I, I like the relative independence of, uh, mm -hmm. of the uh, service. Uh, but, you know, the famous preacher that was there, I uh, can't think of his name now. I knew I'd draw a blank on that. <laughs> but w was that atmosphere kind of replicated at yes. the Second Church? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, most Presbyterians. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Reverend McCracken was the, yeah, and, the reverend at the time. And then Jim... Jim Ferguson, um, then uh, um, I'll think of it. Well, I was just wondering, um, sort of, what are your memories of uh, Reverend McCracken? Memories. Well, I. I just, uh, he, he was a very easy person to talk to, uh, mm. very encouraging, because you know, I was in the law school and I was also raising a sister at that time, a sister who was eight years younger than I. And uh, it was difficult. He had, uh, uh, he helped me a great deal uh, uh, in, in encouragement because it was a tough time for me. Mm. Uh, you said you babysat his two girls. girls. Right there, yeah. Um, do you have any memories of, of them, or...? No, uh, I lost contact with them when they mm -hmm. moved on, and uh, um, 
then Jim Ferguson came on, and uh, so it uh, the church went through a rough time on the move because there were many people that didn't want to move, mm. and uh, I think we lost a few members. Well, um, before we get to the move, I'm wondering what are your uh, recollections of the church on Hanover Street? It was crowded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was right there on the corner of uh, uh, Hanover and Pompert Street. But uh, it was, uh, I think, a move that had to be made. Uh, parking was terrible. Uh, but uh, I was also was a member of the choir there for some period of time. Mm -hmm. Enjoyed that. That was under the leadership of Mary Beitzel? Yes. Yes. What, what was uh, being in the choir with her like? Or under, under her, I should say. Well, I mean, she... She was a good musician, and... Uh, uh, I think there was a period of time when she had to retire, mm. um, but uh, I always enjoyed it. I uh, always enjoyed the music and getting together with other people was also uh, important. Was there anyone else on the on the choir that stood out to you? Um. No. It was just that that sense of so, yeah. Yeah. Getting together. Right. Um, well, how did you find yourself uh, on the committee to, to move the, the church? I guess as a member of the board of trustees, I you know was asked to serve, and I did. Is that is that how um, you found yourself in a number of roles, uh, just being asked to serve, or mm -hmm. as president? Uh, uh, well, during one of my terms, it was three-year terms, and uh, they did one of the first expansions of the building, and uh, I remember signing the mortgage, and I knew I couldn't be held liable if something happened, but it bothered me anyway, <laughs> <laughs> signing the mortgage uh, for the ex for first expansion. Uh, At the, the new site? New or? site, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Um, well, what were some of the, um, on, on the committee to, to move? Actually, before, before that, what were some of the discussions like in terms of, in the congregation about, um, whether or not to move? Do you remember oh, any of those? God, no, you know, you're talking, I'll be, I'll be 82 in April, and this is a long time ago. No, I understand, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I, so um, I, do you remember any specifics uh, as sort of picking out the site or? Yeah, we, uh, this site that we are now on, which mm -hmm. was, the, was uh, it provided so much uh, benefit to us, not, not only to build a, a, a big church, but parking, all street mm -hmm. parking. Um, and, but the grounds were consideration, though, because we knew we'd have to have somebody you know, a committee working on the grounds for, mm. for all year round, but it worked out. Um, Did you, were you also involved in interviewing architects or picking out details in terms of... Now that was a different committee. Was it? Yeah, that was a different committee. So, uh, uh, so there was a separate committee sort of for the specifics of building for, the church? For building the church, yeah. Okay. Except for, as I say, we did... Uh, I remember going to Moeller Organ Company in Baltimore, Maryland, because every one of the pipes in that organ are handmade. Oh wow! Yeah. And uh, it was interesting going through the factory. Uh, and, uh, but that was a lot of fun too. Who are who are some of the, the people that you served with on that committee? Uh, Bob Fry, attorney Bob Fry. Um, He's the one that stands out. 
I don't know whether Bud was on the committee or not. Uh, How involved was uh, uh, Reverend Ferguson in terms of, or did he take a hands-off hands approach? Hands-off approach. Yeah. I mean, he could have said no. I don't want it, but <laughs> it didn't happen. Okay. But uh, yeah, we. Uh, can't remember when that was. My 16th, does anybody, does anybody tell you when the church was? I think it was, uh, I don't know if it opened or if it moved in 72, is that? Because I remember the Agnes flood. Mm -hmm. I remember wiping down walls because it, down in the base, the lower floor, because it got flooded. Mm. And I remember wiping the walls down. Yeah, I was I was just talking with uh, Betsy Wood earlier mm -hmm. today, and she mentioned as a young child mm -hmm. helping uh, move the uh, the carpet out of the basement and sort of drying it in the, mm -hmm. the parking lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, what 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 was that like? You know, just moving into this new church and then a few months later having it flood like that. <laughs> well, it was the church, the area where the church is, used to be flooded all the time. Mm. They used to call it a foggy bottom. <laughs> uh, but then they, you know, as they built homes and so forth around us, they put drains in and mm. improved the situation a great deal. But. Uh, it was heartbreaking because, you know, the cost of the building and yeah. so forth. And, but we managed to survive. One of the things that I guess I was wondering a little bit was um, a lot of people have mentioned that the, the church on Hanover Street um, had no parking. Right. Um, did most people drive to church at mm -hmm. this time? or? No, there wasn't any public, there wasn't any public transportation in Carlisle. But, so that they weren't walking, or well, some, but uh, you know, the problem was that as the church, the congregation expanded, there were people from outside mm. uh, coming in, and uh, that presented a problem. We had to do something, mm -hmm. and the parking garage that's there now was not there way back then. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, now that now that was the road diet. Come to think of it. So, no. yeah, you know, even less parking downtown. <laughs> that road diet. Never mind. <laughs> well, I, I moved to Carlisle after the road diet, so okay. I don't have any memories of okay. it prior to that. But, yeah. Um, so it sounds like you kind of came to Second Presbyterian um, a little bit differently than a number of people I've talked to in that... Um, you didn't grow up in the church, or um, so well, you didn't come to. I, I was always in the church. Um, okay. My, mother, my grandparents, they were German. Mm. And my mother was a German immigrant, and Lutheran was it. And then uh, my stepfather was Methodist. I was baptized in the Methodist church. Uh, but when I came on my, I decided to do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was Presbyterian. What? How, how old were you then uh, when you uh, started attending Second Press? I was in law school. Okay. Um, Dickinson. Yeah. Um, did your uh, mother and stepfather come with you, or did they remain in the Methodist well, Church? At the time that I was in law school, my mother had died when I was in, oh. and my stepfather died mm. prior to that time, prior to my... That's right, you said you were raising a younger sister. Yeah. Did she come with you? Or? Oh, she is now in the church. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so she was raised in the, in the Presbyterian church then? Well... In a sense. In a sense, yeah. 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 Um, what... So, you were raised in church, so, and maybe not second prize, but what role did uh, sort of church or maybe religion play in your uh, family's social life? A great deal. 
a great deal. Uh, there was a, I know this is strange, but I was in Sunday school one time, and I swear there was a voice that said, you can do anything if you believe in me. Mm. And from that time on, my faith was what got me through a lot of hardships in my life. Uh, yeah, that's... I imagine, too, uh, you know, probably going to law school in the, the 60s probably was not easy for... I was, I started law school at George Washington University in D.C. Mm. Uh, I, I went at night, worked in the daytime, and I was taking, it was January, I was taking my first semester exams my first year, and the proctor came to me and she said, there's a phone call. I said, you know I'm not allowed to take phone calls during exams. She said, you will take this. I got on the phone, it was my mother's surgeon, said, your mother has a month to live, get home. Oh, yeah. And uh, I did, and uh, I uh, <coughs> was working at the college, and I decided, I know I've always wanted to be a lawyer. So I walked up to the, the law school and said, I want to apply. And I said, well, fill out the forms. And <laughs> I was the only female in my class. <laughs> yeah. So I remember talking with... Uh, Francis Del Duca, mm -hmm. and she had the, the same experience where... She was a couple of years behind me. Yeah. And, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I'll ask this in two parts, but uh, so what is your, uh, and, and you may have already mentioned it, but your first, I guess, memory of a significant event related to church. That was it. That's, yeah. that's, that was... that's Sunday school. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. And then what about uh, at, at Second Pres? Were there any events early on when you were attending that Stadatio or? Well, it just bolstered my faith. And okay. That's... Uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, Reverend McCracken and then uh, Reverend Ferguson. Um, and Jim uh, Gilchrist. Gilchrist, yeah. Yep. yep. What was, uh, stylistically, what were some of their, um, I guess, strengths? Like, what stood out to you about them, about McCracken and Ferguson and Gilchrist? Well... Jim Ferguson uh, was easy to talk to, He's, mm. and uh, uh, Jim Curl Chris was, uh, uh, he was an intellect. Uh, I yeah. don't mean to disparage anybody, but uh, uh, he had you thinking. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, very good. I mean, all three of them. Uh, they were meant to be preachers, I guess. Mm. Yeah, they knew what they had to do, and each person was different, that had different problems, and they, uh, <coughs> I spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of uh, hours with uh, uh, Jim Ferguson, because um, he was there, I think, the longest. I mean, he retired mm -hmm. from that church, and then Jim Gilchrist came on, and then Jim uh, went to Pittsburgh, much to a lot of people's uh, sorrows. <laughs> but uh, it's difficult, you know, because so many meetings were for personal problems and what have you. They, you know, they were still able to do to it to help you. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
And then what about uh, the, the current pastor, uh, Jeff Gabilius? Jeff is, is doing a, he's really working to create interest in younger people and so mm -hmm. forth, which is a necessity, I think, in our times. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he, uh, it, it's interesting, he, last couple of times he's been uh, giving his sermon from memory. <laughs> he has wow. some notes there, but he doesn't even get up on the pulpit sometimes. And, uh, so he, uh, he's doing it. We're trying to create you know, different types of, of, of Sunday's programs and what have you. Uh, so he and we lost our associate pastor, mm -hmm. um, so we're, I guess it might take a year or two years before we get that replaced, but we're being pushed a little bit with all they have on their menu. <laughs> um, and I believe you mentioned you served on the committee uh, to bring in uh, Jack Larson as associate pastor. Yeah. yeah. What was, what was that experience like? What was interesting, the college had uh, uh, a Sunday nights uh, in front of one of the buildings, you know, a little, I forgot what they called them, and Jack uh, preached there, and uh, Betsy, uh, you said you talked to Betsy from uh, Gardner? Gar no, not Betty. Ferguson? No, no. no. Uh, Wood. Betty Wood. Yes. Her father was on the ca that committee with me okay. uh, to listen to Jack preach, and then we made a recommendation that he be invited to serve as associate pastor. And Jack. Because I know, I know Mike was strongly in favor of bringing in yeah. Jack, yeah. but you didn't think he'd, uh, he'd agree to come. Uh, well, he did. <laughs> he did. And uh, Jack is always lighthearted. And uh, well, what was it that uh, when Jack was preaching at Dickinson that stood out to the committee then? No. No. I can't tell. It was you. Just, uh, yeah. just something. Though. Something. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a relatively easy decision then, or? Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I know. Um, so what, what was that experience like having both uh, Mike and Jack there? Um, they they complemented each other. I mean, they were... Mm -hmm. um, of course, Jack was also the music director there, an the organ player and so forth. Um, but uh, So he had a, a dual purpose, you know, associate pastor, but primarily music and uh, the organ, what have you. And, um, we had a good choir. Yeah. One of the things that I recently learned, you know, is that he was very different than Mary Beitzel in terms of how he directed a choir. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, I think sometimes the pastor got a little um, upset with uh, Mrs. Be Beitzel. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was up in years. Okay. And, uh, but she, she was, I think she lived in Mechanicsburg, so she came over Carlisle mm. you know, for rehearsals and um, service. I don't know when she died. Oh, is that often, um, I don't want to say a source of tension, but something that has to be considered in terms of having the sort of the laity sort of run the church, does that ever cause complications with the the reverend or reverend runs the church. Okay. <laughs> and the board of sessions. Uh the people who uh, But certain people like Mrs. Beitzel still have a, a say in the matter? No, they didn't. It, it was it was a question of tempo, I think. Uh, okay. Uh there are some people that thought that she wasn't getting the choir in the tempo they should be. <laughs> All right. so. And Jack solved that problem? 
Oh, well, Jack. Jack is, uh, he, he's very talented. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you remember any of the, I know, uh, it seemed like one of the early things that both Mike and Jack did was establish a strong uh, youth program. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, do you have any recollections of some of the programming they put on or the events? Because I wasn't involved in them. Uh, you didn't intend but the musicals or only the choir it's, you, you know my schedule was pretty packed and, sure uh, and uh, uh, I, and then I finally had to quit the choir because I just couldn't get the, you know to the rehearsals and so forth was this were you still a lawyer at this point or? I was a, I've been a judge for 37 years okay so and uh, before that, I was on the county bench here. Mm. So, and the fact that I didn't think they'd miss my voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure that's not true. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so after, uh, were you still able to though, serve on uh, committees or, or boards at this point? or Yes, I'm trying to think of all the boards I was on. I'm sorry. The, the Board of Trustees was just eliminated from our organization uh, about two, three years ago, but other than that, I was on that board. I was on the grounds committee. Uh, I remember outside trimming bushes and what have you. Uh, uh, on the, uh, Is that penance for moving everyone there? Pardon? Is that penance for moving to <laughs> yes. that grounds? Uh, uh, also, uh, no, this was on the yeah. Uh, not the budget, but the uh, audit committee. Uh, as I said, the committee to bring Jack here. Um, I guess that was about it. Did you ever um, teach Sunday school or? I taught Sunday school. Uh, when my, uh, in well, when I was quite young, uh, at Carl Barracks. Okay, but not at Second Brothers. No, no, not at Second Brothers. And then, uh, were you ever a part of the Presbyterian Women or? No, I never had the time, because they usually meet in the daytime. Do most of these committees then and boards do they meet on at night? At night? Mm -hmm. I was going to ask on Sunday or anything. Uh, at the. Were they mostly at night? All right. Um, and then I'm guessing uh, not. But did you ever take place uh, or assist with the whale of a sail or? Yeah, donating clothes <laughs> and other things. So it's still, <laughs> that's that's a useful about it. service. <laughs> yes. Okay. Have you ever attended a whale of a sail or? No. No. I get rid of things. I don't buy things. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've heard it's it's quite the uh, quite the scene. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about sort of moving the the church. I'm wondering if there are any other events or church issues that you remember um, coming up over your time. Maybe that you had to deal with on a, a committee or a board. No, it's just you know the church has expanded at least twice. You know, I was on the first one. Uh, but there were no problems. And, uh, what was that, what was the reason then for the expansions? Needed more rooms. Okay. So even even after you built this yeah. your brand new building, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, yeah. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't enough. No. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Always expanding. Oh well, I I know we've we've had leaking problems mm. uh, with, uh, with our roof. You know, we have a rubber roof, and there was some. I think that's been cured now, though. Uh -huh. Good. Um, I'm wondering, uh, are there any specific community issues that you remember the church becoming involved with? Well, it was interesting. A member of our church by the name of George, last name of George, she... Her husband had been representative over in Harrisburg. And I ran for the spot, and she ran for the spot in the same church. 
<laughs> I remember Mike Ferguson saying, may the best woman win, and I lost. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, but that was an interesting experience. Um, it was unusual to have two candidates in the same church running yeah. for the same office. But, uh, yeah. I'm wondering, did the, did the church play any role at all in terms of, or did it cut sort of your running for office in terms of not only that position, but then as a judge? Did you, was there ever pushback from the church or anything? Oh, or? absolutely not. No. Mm -mm. Get, um, so, political parties didn't really play well, a role my, at... There's, the, I'm on the federal bench, and that's an appointment by the president. So okay. That was not but the, the county bench, bench, though. county bench, uh, they stayed out of it. Did they? Yeah. Yep. All right. So I know I've um, spoken with uh, Ann Hoffer, mm -hmm. and she mentioned... Uh, when her husband George was running, yeah. it, things got a little heated in the community. But <laughs> that's because the county is it is an elected position. So yeah. 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 So it's a little bit easier though when you're appointed, I imagine. Where? Well, it can get political, but I can it? but it. I was appointed by President Carter, and he had a totally different way of appointing judges, and it's not used today, and it should be. That's every president Private. does yeah. it his own way. <laughs> so I, met, and I imagine being on the, the federal uh, bench, you don't have to deal too much with uh, sort of, or maybe you do, Carlisle-related issues that come up at church or... No, but... but we not only deal with federal law, we deal with state law, too, depending okay. on the nature of the case. So, for instance, if there's an accident, I had an ac a case sign, it was an accident on 81, and the cars were from four different states, and then I have to decide what law to apply. So the accident happened in Pennsylvania, I applied Pennsylvania law, but when the distribution of, uh, of the... the uh, verdict, the money, it's, it's the individual state law. It's, it's, it, for instance, it, if there's a contract and one of the parties is here, one party in New York, I may have to apply New York law on mm. contract law. So it, it can get a little complex at times. Yeah. <coughs> right now, uh, our our criminal case load is unbelievable. It's just, mm. and unfortunately, it's guns and drugs mm -hmm. and pornography, mm. child pornography. It's overwhelming, the cases that are coming uh, before us. Has there been a, a shift in terms of the I guess, um, when you first became, when, uh, when you were first going to law school and I guess first becoming, uh, first joined Second Pres, has there been a sort of a change in the, in the makeup of the church over that time period from then to now? I'm not too sure. I understand your question. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, when you first joined the church, mm -hmm. um, I guess what was it? What was it like then? In terms of uh, the the people in the community who were who were members. Um, I'm asking this. No, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Is that what you're trying to get at? No, so I, I guess the makeup of the church. Or? Yeah, sort sort of who 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 were members at that point. The mix. Yeah, I do notice now that I said to my sister, I said, "Awful lot of whiteheads in here," and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, well, because that's that's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah. I mean, has has that demographic I think changed I, since? I'm I'm seeing fewer younger people. Mm-hmm. 
so again, I'm just remembering my conversation um, with Mrs. Wood, and you know, she mentioned that when she was a child, it seemed like there were a lot of families, mm -hmm. and so I, I wonder if you also noticed sort of that that growth and then decline. In there, it's not as heavy as it used to be, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what uh, uh, Reverend um, Gibeas is trying to do is to get younger families in and uh, I one of the reasons I asked that is your comment about sort of the the cases you're dealing with now I'm, I wonder if there's a correlation in terms of that sort of societal shift away I think today's problems are caused by the electronics mm. in our society today anymore You, you see stuff, uh, you know, people don't talk to each other anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there was a, a policeman that told me that his, several of his recruits that came in, he had them go to a mall and just to greet people and say, you know, pretend that you were trying to get and they couldn't do it. They could not look people in the eyes and talk to them. Mm. That's going to be the destruction of our society if we cannot learn to look people in the eye and converse with them one-on-one -on -one instead of using electronics. So I, I don't have a smartphone. I consider myself fortunate. <laughs> a smartphone or... Uh, they, they stay away from uh, computers, and mm -hmm. it's uh, our, our pornography, child pornography, is all electronics on, on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, people that do that, they go away for a long time. Yeah. And they don't realize it. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. So, I'm thinking back to uh, social social media is going to be the death of us. <laughs> Great that's why I don't have an account. <coughs> okay. Well, actually, but how how much how has technology been changed your job, or has it? It has. It has. It has. Are you doing any um, sort of tele? We have electronic filings. Everything is electronically filed in our, mm. our system. Uh, I'm in charge. I'm the judge is in charge of trying to get a new courthouse built in Harrisburg. This has been 25, over 25 years of this. Still haven't gotten it yet. And I was looking at some of the the diagrams, and I said, there is no place in the judge's office for file cabinets. This young worker snapper said, well, we're paperless. I said, not in court. We are not paperless. We need files. We need, I, I, I can't carry a, everywhere I go, uh, a computer with me. I need papers. I need to see the original papers. And I said, uh, we, we need file cabinets. <laughs> I don't know what they think. We can run a court paperless. Yeah. We do a good deal of it paperless. But um, it, when I first came, we were using the typewriters and what have you, and, and now uh, it's all computer. Mm. I hate computers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I imagine you have a, a couple good uh, clerks then. And I have uh, one, two, uh, three uh, lawyers uh, in my office. I have mm -hmm. two other lawyers who uh, work outside of the court. Uh, they they do work for another judge. So so there are five people ah. 
working for me. It was a, a uh, court reporter and a, uh, a court assistant who swears in witnesses and prepares whatever documents for me. So it, uh, yeah. And each of the three, uh, they're called law clerks, but they're admitted to the bar mm -hmm. and what have you. Um, uh, they have two, two screens on each of their desks, and I kept thinking, give me two of the kids. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking back to uh, sort of uh, your experience in Sunday school and the comment you made, but I'm wondering how sort of uh, some of the moments in your life when uh, faith has played a particularly important role in your life. Absolutely. If you could sort of, uh, sort of that experience uh, with your mother or... I was two when my mother and father mm -hmm. were divorced. That's when I went to live with my grandparents. And uh, uh, I had two brothers older than I. Uh, and from the day that mom left, I have never, ever seen my father. Mm. That, and he never wanted to see us. Um, and, uh, and then when uh, my stepfather died, and mom and uh, Ruth and I you know, had to fend for ourselves, and then mom died, uh, my husband died about 20 years ago. Um, it's been a rough, rough time. You know, losing the election here, I, I was appointed by the governor the Cumberland County for a vacancy, but then I had to run mm -hmm. the next election, and I lost that. Uh, it, it, I, I have been a person who uh, usually has succeeded whenever I've tried something, mm -hmm. and that was a blow to me. And I had to really, uh, it was a test of my faith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then a year later, I get appointed to the federal bench, so I guess God knew what he was doing after all. <laughs> Yeah, and you've been in the role ever since. So. Yeah. Something I, I should have asked earlier, but um, just, so we, so I have names to put with stories. Uh, what was your uh, mother and stepfather's name? My mother's name was Hilda. Her, her maiden name was Lenhart, but when she remarried, it was Pierce. Okay. No, no, it was Hilda. Rambo, Rambo, mm -hmm. my father. So, mother was married three times. Her mm. first and her third husband were one and the same. Mm. Pierce, Pierce, Rambo in between. And then your uh, stepfather's name? Pierce. No, yeah. But his, his first name, yeah. Uh, Frank. Frank Pierce. Frank Pierce. And then your sister was Ruth? Ruth Pierce. Ruth Pierce. Mm -hmm. And then you said you were married? Yes. I never took my husband's name because sure. I had established my own name. Yeah. He was a lawyer, George Douglas. Okay. And, uh, yeah. It's good to, so, sometimes we go through these entire conversations. We would that. never know your names. So. Um, I'm wondering, how, how did you, uh, how did you meet George? Um, practicing law. Yeah. But that is a no-no story in Carlisle, so just leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I'm wondering how how is your uh, you mentioned that your faith was tested when when you lost uh, the election. I'm wondering how has your faith sort of changed or evolved over time. It's been steady. Yeah, I've been through two bouts of cancer, and mm. uh, I said, "Whatever you want, God, it's your choice." Yeah. You mentioned that the, the Presbyterian Church uh, gave you, or 
I think you mentioned freedom. Is that? I don't know. It's, it, it's not the same thing, you know, Sunday after Sunday. I mean, we have the mm -hmm. routine, but it's different in the sense that, um, you know, it's, it's not rote mm. in a sense. Uh, I know we, we, I know during Ferguson's time, we, we, the kids did a lot of um, plays and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, we haven't had one of those for a long time because I guess maybe we don't have enough kids, but um, it, it, it was just, uh, uh, I didn't feel compelled to be there. I wanted to be there. And that was that was something you hadn't experienced before. Yeah. It just. Uh, it's very difficult to put into words. I just know that I was happier there mm -hmm. than I was in other churches. There was, a, I was in. Washington DC twice for a semester of my junior year and the first semester of my law school. And when I was there my junior year, I went to every conceivable denomination church every Sunday, a, a different one mm -hmm. each Sunday. And that's when I f hit on New York Avenue and it was just something about that church that it was just wonderful. And uh, I came back. Uh, second church and thought, okay, this is about as close as I'll get. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I always like to ask before I end uh, if there's anything that uh, I should have asked um, that I skipped over or that you would like to mention. Oh golly, I haven't given that. I have not given this enough time to think about. But um, I can't think of anything at this point in time. Sure. All right. Well, thank you so much for for making okay. some time for uh, okay. us today, and it was great talking with you. We got all your answers. I think so. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>